Hi, and welcome to worship this Trinity Sunday here at Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, it's so great to have everybody here today. If we haven't met yet, my name is Chris. I'm the pastor here at Trinity Lutheran Church, uh, and welcome to worship this Sunday. Uh, a few things to note uh, as we get going today. I want to say a big thank you to Marsha and Dave and Carolyn uh, for their help uh, doing this here at Trinity today. Um, we also come to this Trinity Sunday knowing that there's a lot of hard stuff that's happening in our world right now. And um, we, we want everyone to know that our prayers are with everybody who's been affected by, by the pandemic, uh, by the violence that we have seen, um, certainly um, by the protests and even the riots that have been happening. Uh, this is a hard time right now, and uh, we want you to know, however you're wrestling with that, struggling with that, uh, you are in our prayers. Uh, we do have some good preaching today from Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, who is the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And I will tell you that she's here to talk about and name those hard things. She's not here to shy away from that stuff. And I think that's an important thing for us as the church, to always be willing uh, to address and talk about the hard things that are going on, and we thank her for that. Uh, we also start out today with a litany from three bishops uh, th from throughout our church, including Bishop Gonia from the Rocky Mountain Synod. Um, so with that in mind, let's just take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today. As faith leaders in Colorado, we are joining our voices to speak to the current pain, suffering, anger, and anguish confronting our communities and our nation. The hard reality of COVID-19 has not only disrupted life as we know it, it has laid bare the disparities in our country. Recent events, including the murder of George Floyd, have revealed with stark clarity the continuing scourge of injustice, racism, and white supremacy in our midst. George Floyd's name joins a litany of people of color who've suffered abuse and been murdered simply because of their skin tone. In light of such atrocities and unholy acts, we join our voices to speak together. Together, we join our voices to mourn and grieve with those who have experienced the trauma of persecution, violence, suffering, and death. Together, we join our voices to bear witness to the stark truth that there is no equal protection under the law in our nation. Indeed, there has never been. Together, we join our voices to acknowledge our own failure and the failure of our churches to heed the cries of our black, brown, and native siblings regarding undue violence from law enforcement. Together, we join our voices to honor our calling to speak out against the profiling, persecution, and execution of our siblings of color. Together, we join our voices to renounce acts of violence from the state, from protesters, or from organized groups trying to incite violence at protests. Together, we join our voices to affirm our commitment as followers of Jesus to seek and demand equality and justice. Together, we join our voices to hold our government authorities accountable for training peace officers in de-escalation and cross-cultural understanding. Together, we join our voices to offer our prayers of support and affirmation for our communities and the law enforcement officers fulfill their obligations faithfully and compassionately. Together we join our voices and commit ourselves as fellow children of God to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Together we pledge to guide our faith communities in doing the same. Together we pledge to guide our faith communities in doing the same. Together we pledge to guide our faith communities in doing the same. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin.
reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing, Holy God, we praise your name.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join in the prayer of the day as found in your bulletin. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we, we worship, worship your, your glory, glory, eternal three in one, one and, and we praise, praise your power, majestic one in three. three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading comes from Genesis 1, beginning at the 26th verse. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The second lesson is from the book of 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. As Pastor Chris already said, this is Trinity Sunday at Trinity Lutheran Church. And the word Trinity starts with three letters, T-R-I, tri, or as we say in Trinity, Trinity, and it means three. Now, probably most of you have at some point in your lives ridden a tricycle. And probably most of you at some point in your lives have played a triangle in your music class. And if you've been at Trinity Lutheran Church, I'm sure you've seen the symbols on our altar that are in threes on all sides of this, of this beautiful altar stand. The, ter- the concept of Trinity is a little bit of a mystery. And I have an example that I'd like to share with you. I am a daughter. My parents are no longer living, but I'm still a daughter and I'm a child of God, so I'm always a daughter. I'm also a mother. I have two sons who are grown 
and I'm also a grandmother. I have grandchildren, and I have one, the youngest one is five months, and the oldest one is 21. So I am three things. I'm a daughter, a mother, and a grandmother. But I'm still just one person. And that's kind of the way we can think about God. We have God as a creator, God the Father. God became human and came to earth as God the Son, Jesus. And the third part of God is the Holy Spirit. And I like to think of the Holy Spirit as the part of God that lives within us. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But it's still one. One in three and three in one. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Help us to remember you are one in three and three in one. Amen. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade, have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's First lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger. And all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how. But I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. 
And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh. Our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd the breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, inequity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul 
that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering. It will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, Holy, Holy, Holy.
We continue our worship as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give thanks for the offerings that we have received. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Sisters and brothers, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this to remember me. And again, after supper, our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and make us bold to pray. Our, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and all with an open hand receive. Behold what you are, and become what you receive. Marcia, the body of Christ is broken for you. Pastor Chris, the body of Christ is broken for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. And may the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace and in his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
God of the welcome table. In this, In this meal, meal, we, we have, have feasted on, on your goodness, goodness and, and we have been united by your presence among us. us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. All right. This time, Chris will get it right. Maybe. We worship, we worship your, your glory, glory eternal three. <laughs> We worship your glorified. <laughs> I can't. Okay. Take three. Are we ready now? All right. Let's take a look at it and see. <laughs> 